I'm Slana, this is Take Your Time, and I'm gonna be doing a video today that I did many, many years ago. You always think that you've done it recently and then you count back the years and it's been, I don't know, five years. I'm gonna be doing a get ready with me slash, I don't really wanna call it a makeup tutorial, but I asked on Instagram stories what look that I often do you'd like to see and a lot of people wanted a basic slash neutral slash work look. So that's what we're gonna be doing. No red lipstick in this one. I thought it'd be a really nice opportunity to show you some of the products that I'm loving at the moment. You can see me try and do my makeup in this like full length mirror that I've propped up under the camera. I cannot do the thing that Marion does, which is do your makeup in like a tiny compact mirror. I'll talk you through everything I'm using, have a little chat in between, and I'll do my hair at the end as well. All right, first step, put in my contacts. <laughs> I haven't put anything on my face yet. So step number one, moisturizer. I'm using Enzymian by Lush. I really love the Lush moisturizers, um, but I do feel like I go through them really quickly. So I think I might try a slightly cheaper one soon and see how that goes. This Enzymian does like go straight into my face, which is good for the makeup. Then I have the Pacifica SPF 30 sunscreen. I bought this in the US. It's water resistant for 30 minutes. It does leave a massive sheen, which is not my favorite, but not really a problem when I wear makeup. Uh, if you don't wear makeup, you might just have to let it set in for quite a while. So no done sunscreen. I didn't really wear sunscreen on my face for the majority of my life. And I've started getting a, quite a few sunspots in the last few years. So they're like on my forehead and under my eyes. And that was not like the worst thing in the world, but I should probably prevent further damage where possible. And I think from what I've heard very often, the SPF that's in your face products is probably not enough because you don't really apply enough of it. I mean, it's just good practice to have a proper face SPF where you can. Okay, so I'm a few shades lighter now. Uh, I'm actually gonna try out a new product that I haven't used before. It is the Lily Lolo Mineral Foundation, which does have SPF 15 in it. I used the um, like translucent face setting powder from them before, but I thought I'd use something that gives me a little bit of coverage so I can top it up in the middle of the day, bring it with me, and it actually has a bit more coverage. I usually use the Illamasqua Liquid Foundation, but I've run out of it, need to buy a new one, and I was gonna get this anyway. So Lily Lolo is actually quite a natural brand, and the pricing of this, I think, is quite reasonable. It's 15 pounds for the foundation, and you get an ingredient list that has one, two, three, four, five ingredients on it, and it's made in the UK. I got the color Blondie, I kind of tested it out in the shop on my hand. I'm guessing this won't give like huge coverage, but that's not what I'm gonna be using it for anyway. While I apply this, I just wanna tell you about how Marion and I went to the Twilight Marathon at the Prince Charles Cinema yesterday. So we have a, a cinema in London that does a lot of marathons and they'll show films that haven't been in the cinema for a while. And Marion and I met through Twilight, which is over 10 years ago. So we figured we'd go see this together and we actually made it through the night somehow. Uh, and then I spent all of yesterday sleeping. I don't know how that's looking on camera, but I am I am pretty pleased with that. I think the Gosh Mineral Foundation gives more coverage, but um, in general, it's looking good, good shade, I think. And then next up, this is one of my favorite makeup products ever. If they discontinue it, I'll be very unhappy. It is the Illamasqua Concealer. Now I have it in CC. 210 which I don't think they do these range of shades anymore. I like that it comes in a compact sometimes it's the only makeup I carry with me because it has a little mirror you can check your lipstick you can check your um, concealer and it's really high coverage concealer and I feel like it lasts forever. I bought some other ones recently I bought the um, new Illamasqua one in a pen and I felt like it just ran out really you can't even see how much is in there and I feel like it ran out incredibly quickly so areas for me are always under the eye, okay, this is using the mineral foundation is definitely a bit drier than I go usually, so <laughs> I can really feel that. Uh, I sometimes use it as like a base under my eyeshadow as well, because why not? It's one less product to bring. And it works really well. It like, I think for spot coverage, this stuff is the shit. So I've got two spots on my chin, so cover those up. Like some little remnants here, little sunspot on the side. Um, at the top. So I think I think one of the reasons I got sunspots at the top is because that's where you sweat off sunscreen. Uh, so I'm trying to keep an eye on that as well. Tiny bit on my nose. 
Uh, and then usually I put a bit around where I'll be applying my lipstick so it gives it a clean edge. Bring some color back into this face. <laughs> I realized that basically almost all of my blushes and all of my bronzers are non-cruelty free or by like brands that have parent companies that test because I've had them for a long, long time. I should probably replace them, but they still seem fine. So I'm gonna hang on to them, don't tell Marion. But I do have the Glossier Cloud Paint in Bean. So it's this little tube, you get a little bit on your finger. I do um, really like a coral blush. So I think this will do quite nicely. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If you're new to using like face powder or foundation, make sure that you get some bronzer and blusher or one of those um, because I didn't do that in the beginning and I just kept thinking why do I look so like I don't know one shade <laughs> because it was only one shade it's got a very mangled gosh bronzer I don't really have a preference bronzer wise I just kind of go with what I have um, so but I really like using this blush brush from Real Techniques because it's kind of like it can cover a bigger area, but it doesn't go too heavy. So I always do my forehead a little bit. I don't do any like particular contouring. A bit of my nose. It's kind of the edges, you know, the edges. And then here, maybe a little. Oh yeah, this is what I got told um, at Charlotte Tilbury recently. So my neck is always lighter than my face. And one person told me to tan my neck more, which I was like, no. Uh, but then another makeup artist gave me the useful tip to put some bronzer in my neck because then it blends out better. I'm also bad at using loads of different brushes, so I'm using the same brush again, which is the Expert Face Brush, I think, to apply my highlighter, which is still the Mary Lou Manizer by The Balm. Uh, I think I only have one, I only have one um, highlighter actually, because I don't really need any more. I think it's a trend at the moment to put a lot of it like on your nose and areas like that, and I'm, I'm not. I don't know if I'm down with that, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> Got a bit more color in my face. I'm gonna zoom in the camera to do my eyes and eyebrows, so get ready for a massive close-up. Hi, welcome to my uh, close-up world. Eyes, I am gonna be using the Milk Makeup Eye Pigments in After Party. I first checked this out in Canada at Sephora and didn't get it, and then months later when I went back to Sephora in Florida, I still really wanted it, so that is a good sign. And it basically is a liquid which sometimes these, I feel like they dry up a little bit and I find it hard to use them, but this has been the perfect color. It stays on like a dream, even when you don't use anything underneath it. I just think this is absolutely perfect. And when I go back to Sephora next time, I might buy another shade, but I think actually this kind of rose goldy peachy shade is a really nice neutral because it means you're not really going very dark because I feel like if you use like a beige it's easy to go a little bit too dark so I just put this on my eyelids really it's pretty easy to do just with your fingers and then I do also go in a little bit under the eye uh in this case I'm using I got this in the US as well this is a lot from that like Florida haul I did Gabriel is the brand which you can buy at Whole Foods I think and the color is buff this is also supposed to be like a more natural brand I just put a little bit under my eye like nothing too much Hopefully it'll be, it'll be easier to see on the non-shaded side of my face a little bit. Uh, and then I might pop a tiny bit in the corner. There we go. And then this is quite fun. I have this eye pencil from Catrice, which is like a double-ended one. And it has, I mean, this never works out super well, but it has this white matte pencil. And I really like lining my lower lid with it. Some people use like a white one. I think that can be a little bit extreme, but feels a bit feels a bit 70s maybe. Now here comes the part that I've been scared about. Uh, eyeliner. And let's see if I can actually get this in the shop. I've been experimenting with cruelty-free liquid liners. The Body Shop has a really nice one. I used the one from the B brand from Superdrug and both tips dried up at the end really quickly and I just couldn't get the dry bits to come off. It was a bit of a disaster. So I was out and about and bought this one from Gosh. I've used it once or twice already, so let's see how I manage. It's not gonna look professional. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. I basically always wear a winged liner. I like the look of it. it makes my eyes look bigger. Okay, uh, sorry. Next up, two products, the Jane Ardale 
lash extender and conditioner. It's just like a white one. Quite nice to use underneath, uh, especially because some of the more natural mascaras don't give like as much volume. Um, so then for mascara, this is a disgusting tube, I'm sorry. I'm using the RMS mascara. It just says mascara on it, cool. Um, these brands are definitely a little bit pricier, but I wanted to get a nice natural mascara and actually I'm quite pleased with this. The formula is good. It does give you a little bit of under eye, like you kind of have to have it through the day, kind of wipe it a little bit. But the problem is the tube. So I really like the brush, but then it's built in a way that when you push it back in, it pushes out some of the mascara and then that like clumps on the outside. So some room for improvement. So it's white, but it kind of, you can also use it as an eyebrow gel because it dries up clear. This is a look and then get the mascara in there. So obviously I dyed my hair ginger and I don't have a ginger eyebrow thing. I was currently using the Essence Make Me Brow in Blonde, which is kind of like a cheaper dupe for the boy brow and I really liked it. And it does work on a day-to-day -day basis because I think my, you can't really tell, but in certain lights, my natural hair has a bit of a like ginger tone to it. But I've been experimenting with this, so I'm gonna, <laughs> risky move, but I'm gonna try it. Uh, actually using a more like brown with some red tones eyeshadow to fill it in. It does get a little bit darker because, um, so I'm using that Gabriel one again that's under my eye as well. It does get a little bit darker because I feel like with the gels, you can't really apply that much. It's, do you see? Like it definitely adds, it's, it's a slightly better match. So I don't think it's, if you buy red, I think it goes maybe too extreme. If you haven't done loads of makeup before and you're keen to try it out, I would say doing your brows, but doing it very light, like using something like boy brow. Don't go, don't go too wild with it. And some mascara and something like a nice peach toned eyeshadow could actually be really nice. Maybe along with, if you want some face powder, some concealer. Like I always wonder how many of the people that watch this channel actually don't wear any makeup or wear like just mascara. But we do actually get loads of requests for like beginner beginner guides so i don't know with all the instagram makeup it can be hard to find stuff that's you know a bit in between that looks, that looks pretty decent i'm happy with that so i'm gonna brush it out a little bit i guess i'll stay up close for this as well is the lipstick i'm gonna be using a charlotte tilbury lipstick in pillow talk it's a tiny bit drying and this color actually looks best on me in Winter, when I'm a bit more pale, if it gets to summer, my face tans very quickly and then it just looks like it's all the same shade. And we're back. So this is the finished look. Oh, I got a spray. So I always use the Overoma Water Toner by Lush. Let me get a little spritz. It'll basically just work as a setting spray and especially when you're using mineral foundation, I think it's nice to kind of let it sink in a little bit. So this is my neutral look and then I'm gonna take out my hair and put in some dry shampoo. So I have switched from using cans to using the no drought shampoo from Lush. It is just the powder that you can easily put in a tiny little like container to bring with you. Gets a little bit messy on the clothes sometimes. So if you're putting on a black layer of clothes, maybe uh, put this on first. And I kind of just go straight from the thing, just kind of put it in there. I'm basically just trying to not use spray cans when it's not necessary at all. Like you're not gonna get hairspray, I think, that's not in a can. Or if there is, tell me. I know you're supposed to let it sit, but I don't really have the patience for that. So I forgot that I slept with wet hair because I showered right after I got home from the marathon. This is not like a great situation. I think I'm just gonna do it maybe this way and then no one will be able to tell. There we go. Also, I like using this Lush product called Punka Wallop, which is a matte hair clay. My mom always has matte hair clay from her fancy hairdressers. I like to use that when I'm in the Netherlands, but now I have my own. And it just gives it a bit more texture, kind of pulls it all together. That's nice. All right, they'll do. All right, I think that is it for the final look. I hope this was helpful to see uh, and see which products I use and stuff. And if you have any requests for Another look, I, we definitely want to do like a short hairstyling video because we both have kind of shoulder length hair now. But if you have any other special requests, leave them in a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram, especially Instagram. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.